In this video, I'm gonna be going over the SEO or search engine optimization feature inside of HubSpot CRM. I'll be explaining the recommendations and the topics. I'll be covering both of these extensively. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be very, very familiar with how to manage any SEO inside of your HubSpot CRM system. Welcome to the channel. My name is Nick. Thank you for giving this video a watch. Just before we get into the video, if you are signing up to HubSpot for the first time, it would be greatly appreciated if you could use my link below. It really does help the channel out. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So once you log into your HubSpot CRM system, of course, you will come to the home screen. Now, like I said, in this video, I am going to be discussing SEO or search engine optimization and all the tools available inside of the HubSpot system for that. So if we go to the marketing drop down menu up the top here, go to website and then SEO. This is where we can go ahead and manage our website SEO inside of our HubSpot system. Now, the first page we'll be presented with is the recommendations area. And this is essentially where HubSpot has very kindly scanned our website based on our domain that we provide and then recommends improvements that we can make to our website to improve the SEO or the search engine optimization. So as you can see here, I've got my domain www.crmcrew.co.uk and it has scanned it 26 minutes ago and it has essentially found a total of 59 issues, which is not particularly good news, 59 issues with my website um, based on 10 pages that has been scanned. And then it has found these issues and then suggested the ways in which we can remedy the problems to obviously improve the SEO. So as you can see here on the left hand side, we've got SEO categories or a nice breakdown. So we've got on page SEO, mobile experience, crawling and indexing, security, performance, user experience and accessibility. And then it's found a number of issues for each of these. Clearly, mobile experience is a big problem of mine for my website. And then you can just scroll through each of these categories and see what is not working. It will kind of tell you how to fix it. And then you can go to your website provider, whether that be WordPress, Wix, Shopify, um, and make those changes. So as you can see, add meta description needs to be done for on-page SEO. And that is of medium impact. And so it's going to have a medium impact, but it's very easy to do. And then if I press view pages, it will show me the seven pages that have been affected by this meta description or I suppose lack of meta description. So it's very, very useful. Obviously, you want to improve your SEO or have it as good as you possibly can. So you are uh, ranking first for any keyword searches. So in my instance, I, of course, want to be ranking first for CRM crew or anything related to that. Maybe Nick Boardman as well. Um, so what I would do is obviously improve my SEO to make sure I rank first for those particular search or keywords. So very, very useful. So as you can see, it was it said it was scanned 26 minutes ago, but once you make those changes, you can then go ahead and rescan now, and it will take a little bit of time to rescan your website. And then once it's updated, you will then see the improvements that have been made and any further suggestions it has. And obviously, I seem to change my website all the time, so it may be completely different after two weeks. And you can then just rescan it and get further information. We can also press the actions button where we can export this information, make this domain default, and I'll come on to that in a second. And we can also remove the domain from the HubSpot system. But what it means by make default is essentially we can have multiple domains um, being run through the recommendations area. So if I press scan new URL, I could add another website and then it would scan that website and make recommendations for that particular website. So you can have multiple websites running and find multiple ways of improving the SEO for each website um, and you can manage all of that from the HubSpot system. And then you can just flick between the different domains up here if you go to domain and then you can see you've got a few different options available. So that is the bulk of the recommendations area inside of SEO, it's pretty simple. So moving on from recommendations inside of the SEO tool of HubSpot, let's head over to the topics area. Now this is an ever so slightly more complicated part of the SEO tool, um, but I'll do my absolute best to explain this as clearly as I can. So topics is essentially where we can manage a topic inside of HubSpot that you are going to produce a piece of content on. So as a really good example, let's say you create blog posts or, or maybe you're looking to start create blog posts. 
this is where you can manage those blog posts and any um, posts that are relating to that particular post. So there are two words that I'm gonna be using in this video. One is a pillar page and one is topic clusters. A pillar page is essentially a central page that you create lots of different links from to different pages. Now, in order to illustrate or explain my point further, I'm just gonna go on this particular topic that I created before starting this video to give you an example. So this here is a pillar page. And this particular piece of content is called business ideas. So my example is I'm looking to create a blog post called business ideas. And then I'm going to, and then essentially it's going to be my pillar page. And then I'm going to attach a load of topic clusters to this pillar page. So I'll come on to pillar, I'll come on to topic clusters in a moment, but essentially let's say for business ideas, I'm going to write a blog post about 10 different business ideas. So maybe one is service-based business, product-based business, and I don't know, it could be anything, drop shipping. I'm, I'm not gonna go through a massive list, but you're obviously gonna create like a header for each idea, and then you're gonna discuss it in detail. And then what you would probably then do is use this as a pillar page to link to your topic clusters. So each subtopic keyword is then going to be uh, drop shipping would be one page and then service based business, another uh, product based business, another and then so on, so forth. So you essentially are linking or using one page, which is the pillar page and linking it to lots and lots and lots of different um, subtopic keywords or sub pages so you drive traffic to one page and then they link to lots and lots of others and then each page will have informative information so I'm sure you've done this before I'm sure you've been on a blog where you've been reading the blog and then it links to another page and then you're like oh I'll click on that I'll see what this particular piece of content is about so then you go ahead and that is essentially you've gone from a pillar page to a, a, a topic cluster so a subtopic so that's what that is Hope, I'm really hoping that my explanation was clear. Um, so if we press the back to SEO button, you can see here what we can do is go ahead to the top right hand corner and add a topic. So if I, if I press the add topic button, and then what we can do is literally just search for different topics. So you could have loads of different ideas and these are essentially our keywords you could say. Um, so if I said starting a business and then press the add button, and then maybe um, I could, I don't know, uh, there are loads of different topic ideas that I could come up with if I created a list. So if I added five, let's say topic ideas, and then you'd see the monthly search volume for each idea and the SEO difficulty. So how difficult is it gonna be to rank highly for this particular keyword? And then after a little while, if you've added enough topics in, uh, HubSpot will begin to recommend topics as well that you could then add and maybe that would be worth you looking at and then creating a piece of content on. So once you have concluded that that is the piece of content that you want to write about or essentially it's got the highest monthly search volume and the difficulty is the lowest, which is kind of what you want to be going for, then you just go ahead and select that particular topic, press the create topic button, and then we'll, then we'll be brought back to this screen here. So we can use this or the topics area as both a means of planning our content and also managing our live content. And we can manage the transition from planning to live as well. So it's a very, very valuable tool. So as you can see here, we've got our pillar page, which is starting a business. Now you might see here, it says attach content URL. Now that is if it is already live, okay? So you could add an external URL, you could create a post if you are managing your blog from your HubSpot system. It will suggest content if again, you are managing your content or managing your blog from your HubSpot system and you can search for specific blogs. But obviously you can add external URL um, if you are managing your blog outside of HubSpot. So that is then your pillar page. And then obviously let's say for content or just as an example in this video, we're creating a piece of content that is about starting a business and it's all about mastering sales and then mark or what you'd need to start a business. So you'd need to be good at sales, good at marketing, good at managing your finances, HR, you need to be good at actually delivering the product or the service. And then for each of those, you would have a subtopic keyword. So again, then you then go ahead and add a subtopic keyword. So if I then add marketing, and then you just press research subtopic keyword and these are your keywords it will show your monthly searches 
So if I add marketing and then you could go ahead, like I said, if it's for planning, you just um, leave it as is. And then if it's actually related to a piece of content, so essentially it's live, you could add external URL. Um, again, you can create a post directly from here. It's the exact same thing as the pillar page. And then we could go ahead and add another subtopic keyword. So like I said, sales as well. So we could then press research subtopic keywords, select sales press the save button and as you can see we are beginning to map it out essentially so the sales marketing the finance the hr the services are all going to link directly from our starting a business blog post like i said it can be managed just for planning purposes but obviously when when you go live with your content as well you can attach your content url like i discussed and then we can go ahead and manage the content performance so if I press content performance up the top here, we'll be able to see how our subtopics are doing. So marketing, we'll be able to see time per page view, bounce rate, link to pillar page, and we'll get the pillar page information as well. So we'll see data to do with that. And we can improve over time and look at the different date ranges. So it is very, very useful um, and great for planning and also great for just managing your live content and adding different ideas um, to your pillar page, things such as that. So if I press the back to SEO button, you can then go to each of your pillar at uh, each of your topics or pillar pages, I suppose, and you use the drop down menu, use the action so you can delete um, any any topic that you've got. You can view the performance like I've just discussed and you've got some basic data like sessions, average session length and bounce rate as well. And we can go ahead and add additional topics where applicable. So I'm really hoping this explanation on topics has been clear. And it's all centered around, obviously, your blogs. Um, and obviously, the tool is being applied to your blogs to improve the SEO of your blogs to get them ranking higher. So you are helping, obviously, people that are searching the internet with something that they are struggling with, for example, starting a business. And then you could get leads from the website that they are or the blog that you are producing. It could be a different, a whole host of different things, just AdSense, for example. But that is the the idea behind topics and then obviously recommendations is improving the like the the technical side of your website as well i'm really hoping this video has been valuable i appreciate it's dragged on a little while and um, but i will hopefully see you in a moment's time you should now all be set to manage your seo inside of hubspot crm using the recommendations to improve your site and the topics to plan and manage your content if you have enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like, possibly even subscribing. If you have any further questions at all, you are more than welcome to just drop a comment below or you could email me as my details in the description below and I will do my absolute best to answer any questions you do have. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'm hoping I will see you shortly in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.